GSMA's Innovation City, which is a showcase of the future of technologies like 5G and IoT. The problem with all that, it's really complicated. So right now you're going to hear an interview with Steve Bell, a heavy reading analyst who is actually a smart guy, somebody from the GSMA, and I'm going to go check out all the demos. So IoT and 5G are two focus areas, along with AI, uh, that seem to be sort of perpetuating throughout the halls. Yeah, so here in Innovation City, we, we invite a number of partners alongside the GSMA to tell the story around things like the hot topics, 5G, IoT, and some of the interesting kind of solutions we've been seeing where there is that merging of 5G and IoT. Uh, robotics is one, so Huawei have been showing uh, a connected robot. now. Traditionally, those robots might have required lots of computing power within the robot itself, and now with, with, the, with the coming of 5G, um, the low latency, the, um, uh, the capacity allows a lot of that computing power to sit in the cloud. So you can remotely manage these robots, they can make decisions on the ground, there might be artificial intelligence running within the cloud, and because of that low latency, because of the speed of the network, uh, it allows the robots to be, become less intelligent almost, which keeps the cost down, and, and you can do a lot of the computing power on the network. Things like um, connected cars, similarly, you know, where the, the driving experience relies on additional information or perhaps it relies on, on uh, more complex algorithms to understand more complex vo voice commands. Again, you can decentralize some of that, uh, the information away from the car, the computing power away from the car and put it up in the cloud. Is, is, is that something that's five years out, or are we sort of talking sort of, you know, within the next two years? Yeah, well, commercial 5G networks are not very far away. Uh, they're saying late 2018, early 2019 for markets such as the US, UAE, um, and Korea. Uh, and then further on out, we will begin to see much more services begin to roll out and the, and the, the growth of, of the applications that sit on top of 5G. And, and with regard to the connected car or the autonomous vehicle, what, what's the, the sort of time frame in terms of, of that? Is that sort of something that's, that's going to be coming again within the sort of two year time frame or are we talking more of a, an extended sort of five years and, and part of a smart city uh, environment? I think it's probably a little bit further out, it's more like the four or five years. Um, you know, Huawei again, they're working with a partner around uh, uh, an autonomous drone, or, uh, so they, it's a, literally a taxi drone that runs between, they've tested it between Dubai Airport and downtown. And that again relies on a 5G network whereby if you slice the network, you have a, a restricted uh, communication channel with the drone, providing a safety blanket, shall we say, for a remote operator to control the drone, provide safety for its, um, its flight between one, one destination and another. And that's, you know, that, that, that aligns with the kind of the, the autonomous vehicle, um, whether it's vehicles on the ground or vehicles in the air. What, what about closer in IoT activity? I mean, what, what's sort of exciting on the, on the city stand yeah. with that respect? A little bit closer to home, and, and, but less focused on 5G is more the low power wide area area solution. So everything that you can conceivably think about putting a device, a connected device into, uh, is being thought about. We have a solution, a connected work boot. So for worker safety, remote workers, um, using the low power wide area technology means that uh, for the, the workers can be further afield, um, but they can be communicated with in two ways still. Even if their cellular mobile phone doesn't have connectivity, the device in the boot will. Um, things like tracking shipments, so we have uh, freight going around the world, there might be high value items that if they're subjected to a G-force or high temperatures, it might destroy some of the components in the, and, and, and owners want to know that, and retailers want to know that. It could be food produce, but those devices, they last for maybe 10 years on two AA batteries. Um, the connectivity is, uh, you know, the times between transmissions are, are much greater. They may be even excep exceptionally based, whereby they don't transmit any information for two, three, four months. Um, but what happens is something in the environment changes. They get a shock or they detect water, and that kicks into action the transmitter and it says, hey, you know, the, this perishable goods, they've been subjected to a high heat for two days, they're going to be spoiled by the time they reach the shops, we need to take action. And, and what's your favourite demonstration on the stand? 
I have to confess, I experienced Huawei's uh, 5G virtual reality experience, lunar landing, and it is the most immersive uh, experience I've ever, I've ever VR experience I've ever uh, engaged upon, and it shows kind of how taking computing away from the device that you're carrying and putting it up in the cloud um, really allows the device to become much more uh, lightweight and simple. Super. Thanks Brilliant. very much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.